All right, guys. Today we're gonna talk about one of the forefathers of Meiji Japan, Sakamoto Ryoma. Coming up, Ryoma was the son of a low-ranking samurai from Tosa, Japan. And although his family was from the samurai class, his domain treated them differently due to their rank. At 12, Ryoma was enrolled into a private school. But since he was being bullied constantly, his sister took him out of the school so he could focus more on protecting himself. He began to learn swordsmanship from a local samurai known as Hine no Benji. Years later, he makes his way to the city of Edo where he became a disciple at the Hakushin Ito school. While he's there, he goes on to become an instructor as a master of the Hakushin Ito Ryu style. Nearly a decade later, Ryoma found himself in a heated political climate. Ryoma is from the Bakumatsu period, which is a time where the Tokugawa shogunate reigned supreme instead of the emperor. For a long time, Japan had their docks closed to foreigners due to the Sakaku incident. But when one of the US officers came over and said, you're gonna open up these docks or else, the shogunate yielded to their commands. This had the people of Japan looking at the shogunate in a whole different way. The shogunate were never as forgiving with their own kind. Bad conditions, terrible pay, and even worse repercussions if they tried to neglect their judgment. The way they saw it was, how you gonna dog out your own kind, but you sitting here bending over for the US? You guys get no respect. And I think it's time for y'all to move around. With that being said, several groups started to emerge that went against the shogunate with the intentions of restoring power to the emperor. Among all of these groups was the Tosa Loyalist Party, an organization that Ryoma decided to join alongside one of his friends, Takechi. As someone who grew up unfairly due to their status, Ryoma knew what it was like being disadvantaged just as much as anybody. The Tosa party itself, like the rest of the groups, followed the principle, revered the emperor, meaning that the imperial empire should be held at all costs and these shogunate officials plus these foreigners need to go back to where they came from. As an advocate of these ideas, one of Ryoma's personal targets was a high-ranked shogunate official, Katsu Kaishu. Now, before they met, Ryoma was more than willing to put this man in the ground. But when they met face to face, his outlook suddenly changed. Katsu was a captain for the very first Japanese steamer. And while it was ideal to look down on foreigners at the time, Kaishu spent a fair amount of time in the West and told Ryoma it would be way more beneficial to see what they could learn from their people instead. So, putting those conversations into effect, Ryoma ditched his original plans of assassinating Katsu and joined the Navy alongside him. Not too much later, Ryoma was able to help Katsu establish the Kobe Naval Training Center, where he taught other students that wanted to lend a hand. A year passes by and people are still in an uproar. Continuing to follow the ideas of the status quo, the Choshu Domain started to bomb several foreign ships the moment that they got near Japan. At the time, Ryoma had been sending letters to his sister how he illegally left his domain to join his team and how he dreamed of purging Japan of this toxic state of mind. Unfortunately, the shogunate had no intentions on letting things go his way. With the acts of the Choshu, the shogunate realized you guys are a little too free thinking and we don't like that. We like drones. So they took Ryoma and Katsu's positions from them and shut the naval center down shortly after. At this point, you can imagine that Ryoma is feeling kind of disrespected, to say the least. That's funny. I tried to be civil about the situation, but it appears to me that you guys want these problems. Well, so be it. And it didn't help 
that the shogunate was cracking down on everybody due to the uprisings. Domains that were formerly willing to settle for an agreement were starting to realize that it was never going to happen. The Satsuma domain in particular started drifting into becoming the shogunate's enemy altogether. Using his political expertise, Ryoma established the Satsuma Choshu Alliance, which combined forces from the Satsuma and Choshu domains to take down the shogunate. Through his connections, Ryoma was able to establish his own company and private navy, the Kaientai who lent a hand to the Alliance by supplying them with things such as ships and weapons. Once the Alliance got a hold of these ships, they started bombing everybody that came in their direction. Merchants from America, the Netherlands, and even France would catch a beat down when they sailed nearby. The Shogunate realized with attacks like this happening, things were only gonna get worse. So they sent out their goons to deal with the Alliance. This led to even bigger disputes like the Battle of Shimonoseki and the second Choshu expedition. After the Shogunate started to get cleaned up, they were begging to be more negotiable now. It was here where Ryoma laid out his eight point plan, the Senchu Hasaku, that could help bring Japan up to speed with modern times. This included the shogunate relinquishing their power to the empire. The official Shojiro was so impressed by Ryoma's plan that he petitioned to get the shogun Yoshinobu to step down. Undeniably, Ryoma's efforts had done a great deal to upstart the Meiji Restoration and would revolutionize the way that Japan operated for several years to come. A month later, Ryoma found himself at Omiya Inn, which was a place that he decided to hang out until the heat died down. While he's enjoying his stay, two men appeared at the front entrance asking Ryoma's bodyguard if he was available for visits. The bodyguard goes on to tell Ryoma about these two men, and the moment that he turns around, he is assassinated by a sword to the spine. The assailants then rush up the stairs, doing the same thing to Ryoma, leaving him and his partner Kentaro for dead. Now, many speculations have been made as to who was the one that issued this order, but for the most part, the Mimiwari Gumi police are often said to be the ones that committed the crime. In their eyes, their loyalty to the shogunate made Ryoma a natural enemy. In grand order, Ryoma continues to be just as helpful. Just like in his past, he is introduced in the Imperial Capital chapter as a hero of the Meiji Restoration. He is also accompanied by Oreo, who is a humanoid dragon that Ryoma released from being sealed in a mountainside. And she is actually based on his real wife who carried the same nickname. Ever since Oreo was saved, she serves faithfully at Ryoma's side and acts as an incarnation of his noble phantasm. As we make our way through the event, we find that a man by the name of Izo Okada holds a deep sentiment of hatred for Ryoma. See, Izo too was a part of the Tulsa Loyalist organization that Ryoma joined back in the day. And although Ryoma did stay true to the core focus of his beliefs, he went against the party's creed and accepted the foreigners for who they are. For that, Izo recognizes Ryoma as a traitor and blames him as one of the reasons that he was beheaded during his past. Ryoma accepts his criticism wholeheartedly and even allows Izo to kill him if that would help get the situation off his chest. Regardless of this fact, Izo was only able to bring himself to give Ryoma a harsh wound, implying that even he had a lot more respect for Ryoma than he was letting on. Even after his death, the young revolutionist continues to garner respect from all the people that surround him. Let me know what you guys think. Like the video if you enjoyed it. 
shout out to all the patrons and i will be back with more tight moon content it is your boy sire i'm out